Step one, wake up early, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, f- everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. Today we're gonna do a quick video on how to make your very own professional grade battery cable. Some of you might ask, why would you want to make these? You could just go buy them in the store. You could buy battery cables at the store, at the big box stores, whatever, on Amazon. But it's very important to learn how to make your own cables in case you decide you want to learn how to make your own solar power system and build your own battery bank. It's very important that you know how to make these because you're not always going to be able to find the size and diameter that you want to fit your application. When I built my first system up at the off-grid property, I ran into issues where I needed certain length battery cables to meet my needs based on my configuration and where I had them placed, and I just couldn't get them. And I was piecing it together with different lengths of uh, battery cable that I purchased from a store, different lengths of them already made, And for one, it's just, your system will be much more efficient if all of your battery cables are the same length and diameter for voltage drop and resistance. Especially if you're using lithium batteries, you want everything to be identical between all of the cells. That way there's no difference in resistance between the cells, very important. I think it's also important for lead acid as well, but not as important, but still very important. Um, You're you're gonna run into it. If you decide to build your own solar power system, you're gonna run into an issue of not having the right battery cables for your application. It's going to happen, for sure. It's real easy to learn how to make these and make them just as good as they do in the the factories, okay? So this is all we're gonna need to make this this battery cable right here. Um, Hydraulic crimper, terminal ends, some heat shrink, some uh, Klein, you can, whatever brand, but these are Klein uh, cable cutters. In my application, I'm using two gauge wire or two AWG. And you don't need it, but I'm using a heat gun to uh, shrink up the uh, heat shrink. You can use a lighter or a lightweight blowtorch if you're very careful, but this just makes it safer so you're not burning your fingers off. And it's just easier, I think. And you have a better looking product, uh, end product. Okay, couple of different things. First, you're gonna wanna figure out what size wire you're gonna need, cable you're gonna need. So if you're setting up a a battery bank, the batteries should all be uh, in basically like in a a grid with equal distance apart or together. They shouldn't be butted up to one another unless they're lithium. Uh, Lead acid, you wanna leave some space between them so they can breathe. But you want to find, whatever your configuration is, you might have a battery somewhere over here on on uh, right field. You're gonna wanna make sure all your cables are the same length, okay? So if if for whatever reason, one of your batteries is just a little bit further away and you gotta make that cable longer, okay. Make them all that size, just so they have the same resistance, okay? Um, In my case, I need one this size. For a project I'm working on that I'll be uh, doing a video on here in the future. I think you guys like that. And the other thing to consider is the shape of your cable. You can make your cables straight if that works in your application. If that works just fine for you, great. In my application, I need them to be bent like this. The way that I put this together with the terminal ends crimped on like this, it doesn't want to go straight anymore. Because this is fine stranded, you probably can't see it very well, that's fine stranded welding wire. And when you bend it and then crimp your ends on, it will somewhat hold its shape. If you leave this straight, and then crimp your ends on, you're gonna have a hard time bending it like I need it to be for my project. Keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is, uh, in my application, I need both these terminal ends to be basically in the same orientation, just like that, okay? But in your application, you might need one of these ends to be turned slightly or in a different direction, which is totally doable, totally fine, nothing wrong with that. You can crimp it on in that orientation. Another benefit to making your own cables. So, again, the first thing we do is we figure out our cable length, which I've already done right here. You go ahead and, that's an ugly end right there. I don't like it. This is a clean end. Okay, so just roughly straighten these out. And then determine your length, just like that. Get your cable cutters, put them right up to the, the one on top to get your length. Set that aside and cut on the floor. Okay, 
there's my new one. This is the old one. Same size. Secondly, you can use a razor knife. You can use uh, maybe a... Uh, uh, Two hours later. A wire stripper. This is my wire stripper. Okay. Try to straighten it out a little bit. Get it nice and straight first. Do about a half inch. Basically, whatever the depth of this is from here to here, it's just about, a, it's almost a half an inch. So just go ahead and carefully cut this. Don't cut too deep into the wire. You don't want to score the wires or, or cut any of the wires off and just pull it off like that. Same thing to the other side. About a half inch. In this case, different uh, terminal ends might be a little bit deeper. So you got to take note of that as well and just Give it a little snap on each side and it comes right off. Okay, again, we're gonna grab our crimper tool. It's a hydraulic crimper, a pretty crappy one from Amazon. I'm not really happy with this one. I have another one that looks just like that, but it's a different brand. Also a pretty low end, low budget crimper and it works great. This one doesn't work as well, but it still works. So we're gonna use it in this case. So. You can buy all these on Amazon. Um, it comes with different size, um, whatever you call these, crimper settings, crimper blocks, I don't know what they're called. Dies, a die. Okay, different size for different size uh, terminal ends. In this case, for two gauge wire, I'm using number 25 according to this set, okay? That's what we're using. So first thing you're gonna do, um, go ahead and get your terminal end. Stick it in this end right here. And then you make sure this is tight to the right. Turn it to the right, tightens it up. And then use your fingers to just kind of work this back and forth until this die catches on to the terminal end and basically holds it for you so you don't have to hold on to it with your fingers anymore. All right, there it is. It's got it. I don't have to hold it anymore. So again, also one thing to note real quick, if you guys are gonna use heat shrink, which you should. Um, in some cases, if your heat shrink is a little smaller than this, you're gonna to wanna to put it on maybe before you put your crimp, your crimp your ends on, okay? You might just wanna slide them on and just leave them hanging here until you crimp your ends on. In this case, these are pretty large. I don't need, need to do that right now. I'll put these on at the end. Okay, again, I want my cables to be bent, curved like this. So I'm not gonna crimp my ends on like this. I'm gonna bend the wire, then put it in to the terminal end here, and then I'll start crimping it. I'm gonna need probably the use of my leg, which I will push this handle off of my leg like this, so I have some leverage with my other hand. Again, I want my wire like this, and remember the orientation of your terminal end. That's how I need it, just like that. So carefully slide that in there without losing any wires, just like that. That's how I need my, my cable to be. So I'm gonna start pushing on this, using my fingers to, to uh, pull the lever back. I'm gonna keep doing this until it gets really hard to push. And here in a minute, it's gonna hold this cable for me. A minute, more like a second. There it is, it's got it. I'm just gonna give it a couple more squeezes on this thing. to make sure I got it nice and crimped in there, nice and tight. There it is, that's, that's it. Okay, to release it, Turn this dial the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Just like that. That's it. We're gonna do that one more time on the other, on the other end, okay? So again, tighten this up, just like a, like a hydraulic jack. Take this end, put it in the other side, like this. And you can just hold it up like this, no big deal. And just, just work this back and forth until it holds onto the terminal end for you. Pretty, Pretty simple. Going a little too far. There we go. Also take note of the orientation of your terminal end. In my case, I need them both to be oriented the same, flat, like this. So I'm gonna put it on just like that and crimp it on. You might have yours turned on one end for, uh, to meet the needs of your application. Um, just keep that in mind, guys. Again, put the uh, stranded wire carefully in here without losing any of them on the outside. Just like that. And again, I gotta use my leg to do this because I don't have a third hand. Try to keep it oriented the way I want it. 
And I'm just gonna keep doing this until it grips on to the cable and I won't have to hold it anymore. All right, maybe one more. Oh yeah, that's digging into my leg now. Okay, so get it nice and tight. This, this crimper doesn't work that great. It's got a, you can tell there's some bypass going on there or some blow by with the uh, oil inside. But there's a certain spot it's got a it's got a sweet spot where it finally just goes for it anyways what a piece of crap they're not all the same um they might look the same but they're not all the same anyways um still works it still works even though it's a piece of crap okay that's it they're on there they're not coming off last thing to do in this case is heat shrink slide the heat shrink over the end like that um, I'll show you here in just a second just how far you want to put it down over the terminal and the cable. Now we're going to stand up our, uh, our heat gun here. Should be able to stand up like this so you don't have to hold it. Turn it on high, that's how I do it anyways. Be careful not to knock this thing over once it gets hot because it will light stuff on fire. And we're just going to hold this over here until it shrinks up. You can rotate it back and forth like this, just to kind of cover all the surface of the heat shrink. Pretty simple. On this heat shrink, it does have a glue inside, an adhesive that will uh, start to melt and squeeze out the end. That's how you know it's real good. And I'm already seeing the adhesive come out now. Do a little bit on the end here. That's it. I'm liking it. It looks good. I'm running out of red on this one, so I gotta use a black one. No big deal. Same stuff, just a different color. Same thing. Rotate it around. Guys, I'm sorry if I'm sweating it. It's like 120 degrees inside my garage right now. This is Southern Arizona in the summer. Um, yeah, just keep working this around until it shrinks all the way up. All the glue squeezes out at the end there. It's looking pretty good. Yep, looking good, looking good. All right, that's it. Done. So, other than the different color heat shrink, it's the exact same cable. Exactly the same. That's what I need. I need about five of these, and I need five of the black ones, positive and negative. Again, for an upcoming project that we're going to be working on. Okay, this end is hot to the touch but it shouldn't light anything on fire, okay? If you set it down on something here, it's not gonna light anything on fire. This, on the other hand, is extremely hot, and if you lay this down right here, it will melt right through this and probably catch this on fire. Be very careful with this end of your uh, heat gun. Make sure you set it on its back like this, tip, uh, pre preferably on a uh, concrete surface or a tile countertop or, um, you know, whatever. Whatever countertop you have, as long as it's not, uh, flammable or can melt. I'm setting it on my floor here in the garage, making sure it doesn't tip over. All right, guys, uh, that's gonna do it. I'm, I'm starting to melt in here, as you can see. Um, pretty hot, but um, that's how simple it is to make your own battery cables. It's not difficult at all. You're gonna buy a couple of tools, maybe you get a good one, maybe you don't. Maybe you spend a little more money and get a good one, like I should have done in this case. This, all this stuff is pretty inexpensive. This is a little pricey, but this is a, a thicker gauge cable. Um, again, no big deal, cheap stuff right here. But all this stuff is relatively inexpensive and you can continue to make your own cables forever. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below in the comment section. And if you guys wouldn't mind, go down to my description. There's some, uh, some uh, useful links down there. Uh, links to my website, my new website that I just started up. Um, it's pretty, pretty primitive, pretty basic. It doesn't have a lot on it yet, um, but I will have more on there in the future. I'll be adding to it over time. There is a couple of different tabs in there where I have uh, basically gathered a lot of things that I've purchased over the years, used over the years that have helped me out in uh, the whole off-grid, homesteading, whatever. It's, I, I'm throwing them on there over time just to kind of keep everything I use in one spot so it's easy to find for everyone. Um, again, the website's there um, in the, uh, at the link down below. 
along with um, all of my socials, and I have a pretty basic merch store set up um, that I'll be working on over time. I may not stick with this one, I might go to another one, but for now, it's, it's something. Um, I know a couple of people have asked me over the years on my other channel, um, but uh, yeah, just got that rolling, so I've been really busy working on stuff here, guys. Um, trying, to, trying to produce a little more, more content, um, add a little more value to my content. So please go down to the description, check out that link. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give it a like, please. Um, and uh, don't forget to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified of future videos. And with all of that being said, guys, take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.